And welcome to another edition of the Industry Insider Podcast, your promotional products podcast where you can get all the nerdy news you need to know about. I'm Jeff Franklin, National Accounts Manager with Headwear USA, and I'm joined today by three other lovely guests, lovely and talented guests. We'll get to them in just a second, but first of all, I just want to let you guys know, today we're brought to, brought to you by Tervis, all right? Uh, Tervis has been around since uh, 1946, starting with their classic line, Sleek Styles made, uh, makes this perfect for the active and on-the-go lifestyle. Tervis is the original double wall insulated drinkware that keeps cold drinks cold and reduces condensation backed by a made for life guarantee. Tervis is the original customizable double wall insulated drinkware that keeps hot drinks hot and cold drinks cold. Steven, that's your favorite line, isn't it? <laughs> Available in several favorite. sizes, uh, included in a sippy cup, uh, wine glass, both stemmed and stemless, 10, 10 ounce wavy, 16 ounce mug, 16 ounce, um, uh, 16 ounce and 24 ounce tumblers and a 24 ounce water bottle. Uh, they're made from Triton Plastic, made in America, lifetime warranty, dishwasher, and microwave safe, BPA free. Uh, you guys got to check them out at tervispromo.com for more information. So to the folks that I'm joined by today, uh, let's go with Stephen McFadden from Perfect Promotions and More. How are you today, sir? Doing well. Glad Excited to be here. It. Glad to hear it. Meg Gerber, SNS Activewear, the lovely and talented. Hey. <laughs> new hair. New hair. <laughs> yeah, new hair, right? I guess the quarantine must be over. We're not doing quarantine here anymore. My God, uh, it was ratchet. It was really bad. It was, it was bad. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> also joined today by our special guest, CJ Schmidt of Hit Promo, guys. Big time on the show today. Come on. What's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Joining from uh, Upper Peninsula in Escanaba, Michigan. Been uh, hanging out here for about a month, so all good. That was Very lovely. cool. Very enough. cool. So for, for those of you guys that don't know, CJ is is from the Florida area. He's not normally from the Upper Peninsula. And uh, the, you've been the up lower there for, peninsula. For, 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 uh, for, for about, yeah, that's true. He's from the Lower Peninsula. <laughs> Very uh, low. Way low. Um, yeah. But yeah, so CJ, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's pretty standard here on this podcast since we've started uh, with the, the special guest to basically give you guys a platform to to basically open it up and to talk about yourself mm -hmm. for a few minutes. We'd, we'd love to hear from anybody that that doesn't know who hit promo is uh you know give us you know a quick rundown on what's been going on how you've been and sort of how you got your start in the industry and and all that good stuff but we're going to cap it at three to four minutes you okay. get no good special luck. exception cj we're still going to cut you off at three to four minutes <laughs> i'll be i'll be much obliged to be done by then um, fair enough so started family business so kind of got into it uh all the way growing up working in the sample room and factory and unloading containers and, and all that jazz and uh i was in between i didn't even want to come close to doing this and then i was going to, going to school to be a sports agent and in between junior and senior year of college my dad took me to china and hong kong and kind of fell in love with that whole process and i told him hey if you got a spot for me uh i'd, I'd be i'd be more than happy to join you and i uh kind of worked through uh, my senior year helping with some inside sales and quoting and stuff and joined i think may of 2005 and been going strong ever since um so yeah family business and um growing it pretty nicely and and made some awesome friends and and great relationships and such along the way and uh, we're at about uh 4500 people total in a good good uh uh season and and yeah. non-pandemic um, that's down to about 22 to 2300 right now. So almost cut in half. Fortunately for us, we work with a lot of, uh, temp labor. So we're able to flex pretty quickly and, and adapt and reduce our fixed costs according to the business that we have. We've been on a good run. Um, I'm sure I haven't really watched a ton of these, but I'm sure people talk about PPE and hand sanitizers. I watched them all with Cudahy on here and, uh, uh, that's that, the one you watched out of all. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, he, he left me, but he's still my homie. I know. So. I know. Um. Uh. Anyway, so that was a good one, but uh, yeah. So we we had a good run with the whole PPE deal and and adapted pretty quickly. And uh, I got a call from two customers on the same day around like March fifteenth, and we had begin emails from China. Hey, do you want to sell masks? Do you want to sell masks? And we're kind of like, yeah. I don't know if we want to take that risk. We don't, it hasn't really hit the U S and, and we think we're going to be able to contain it, blah, blah, blah. And then they said, well, we have an order for 1.2 million pieces. I said, sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into this. 
<laughs> um, so, so we kept it really small and only dealt with like 10 customers through the whole PPE thing. Um, but they were really, uh, we're talking really big numbers here. We're, we did about 45 to $50 million in, uh, in, in masks, gowns, gloves, nitro gloves are impossible to find by the way. Um, sanitize, sanitizers, we didn't include in that. Um, so pivoted quickly, had our whole team work on it. Our import team's really strong and, and we did a nice job with it. Just got a lot of inventory to be honest, sitting on the shelf. Um, right now but hopefully that moves eventually and uh yeah man we pivoted really well and and uh i hate that word pivot sorry um yeah sorry i i didn't even see you do that uh, but i've used we we adapted very well and um worked 16 hours to 18 hours a day for about two months straight and yeah uh, it was kind of like i was uh, i was just getting back into it again right sourcing from china and dealing with customers and not running the deal, just kind of focused on one task. So it was a fun run and, and we're still in it to a slight degree, but we are seeing PPE sales just drop dramatically um, in the past two hmm. weeks. CJ, do you wow. think that you're going to see another increase or based oh. on what's going on and that like what the media is portraying and what's going on? Do you think you're going to see another increase in PPE like when the second wave? Or <sighs> I think that they bought enough to cover them for like a decade quite frankly i mean the numbers that were thrown out there were ridiculous in my mind and um one of the big masks was the kn95 mm -hmm. um that everyone was buying or the hospital or healthcare world and, and that's kind of died out and because the n95 supply has really uh ramped up and, and whatnot so maybe um not to the extreme that it was we're, we're seeing more which I'm sure S and S and, and headwear, and we were talking a little bit prior to this. Uh, the cotton mat sales are, are, are really where it's at. Reusable, oh, yeah. you can wash them. Yep. Highly customizable. Yep. Um, so many different variations. I mean, uh, it, it's crazy what you can do to a mask, right? But um, that, yes, and and we we love that. But no, I don't think like the you'll get a couple disposable three ply orders for us a couple a week, but not, nothing um, nothing major at this point. Okay. Fair enough. So uh, you, I, you mentioned uh, you, you it's family business. You didn't uh, necessarily want to get into this. You were going to school for being a sports agent. That was correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'm just going to take this completely off topic for a second because guess what? There's sports. Sports are back, guys. Is anybody else excited right yeah. now? I had my 76er shirt on earlier. Come on. <laughs> Come on. And let's not even talk about the Miami Marlins. Let's, let's not even talk about the Mar Miami Marlins right now. That's a fluke. Don't worry about it. Sports are back. Let's focus on the positive. <laughs> I only took three games. Although the, right. with the under, you're always winning. It's because they losing. went to Philly, you know, oh, Nick, I blame you. Okay. I blame you ultimately. Well, um, <clears throat> go ahead. Jeff and that, I mean, I like the bubble idea so much better, but it's so hard to control. There's too many people on, on baseball and football teams to control that obviously. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, We'll see well, what NFL is still talking about, you know, they're, they're moving forward with the just expectation doing it. Yeah. of just doing it. It, it. Stadium fans, everything, man. Mm -hmm. uh, at least that's the word. Like, I don't know if it's actually going to pan out that way. They've canceled all the preseason games, so they're not going to start until, you know, whenever regular season would start. But uh, right. yeah, their intent is to, yeah. <laughs> just to go straight on forward with it. So we'll see how that pans out. But Anyhow, thanks for being here. Thanks for giving us the uh, the overview. And um, basically, I think one of the things we wanted to talk about today or really hit on was sort of, uh, I think we coined the phrase hard goods during a hard time. Uh, you know, so sort of outside of the PPE world or aspect, you know, what, what, what have you seen, uh, you know, or how have you handled all of the other, you know, 18 billion products <laughs> that you guys yeah. sell? Uh, and, and, you know, where, where would you normally, or where would you be? I think Steven, you potentially, uh, or did ask if there was any statistics you might be able to share with us as far as, you know. Yeah. And kind of looking into that, you know, I, um, CG, I'm sure you saw that, you know, four imprinted their little, June report, and then we're talking about their, their total order count. Uh, was it um, May through June? I believe they, you know, they said prior to this, they were down about 80% in total order count. Uh, but then they saw June to start to pick back up, or the end of June into July pick back up. And, you know, you guys are also, uh, you know, as large as you are, a good bellwether for just, you know, figuring out what's going on with the industry. So that's really why we wanted to sure. you know, see what you got going on and what what kind of pulse you have on what people are buying. So uh, for us, I looked at orders as build orders or invoice, not booked. Um, so uh, 
April was really slow um, because we were booking a lot of orders, but they had not shipped yet because all the PPE stuff, right? So April, we were down 25%. Um, May, we were up about 12%. And we had a big May the year before. And June, we were down, uh, we did 40 million in 2020. And so, so we were down about 25%, um, but on it more profitable. Um, almost the exact same profit on $8 million less in sales, which is wow. incredible. That's we crazy. were really, we were thrilled about that. And you can just understand why less fixed or <clears throat> yeah, you can control your fixed costs a little bit better. Um, all sorts of positive things in that regard. So uh, for us, traditional pr promo sales down about 20 to 22 percent hmm. which hmm. is which is pretty strong in our in, in in our mind and i think one of the reasons for that is our deep inventory levels that we always keep um there's still some industries that are doing well a la grocery stores um healthcare chains uh insurance companies medical insurance specifically that we're getting humongous pops for and that's covering a lot of uh, a lot of basis and then in addition to that, all the uh, direct mail stuff going to people's houses mm -hmm. and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I, I know more about the U.S. Postal Service now than I'd like to share. <laughs> well, um, if you no kidding. Podcast, you would have known that we actually had a whole segment on direct mail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I will start watching. On uh, I've been I've been grinding on. We yeah, we've. Uh, you get a lot got going on. I mean, I, right. I know why you've only watched one. It's because you chose the one with Cuddy. Like, I would have stopped there as well. Like, I don't blame uh, you. That, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. You, you did a nice job. Having I'm just ragging on him. I know. John, John's one of my boys, man. Yeah, I've uh, I've given him enough, you, you know what, to, for, for a lifetime. So, Fair uh, but no, it's, it. you know, we're, we feel we're, we're, we're blessed. Uh, we're, we're happy. Things are good. Uh, we're not happy in the scenario that's our country's in right now. Right. But we're, we're happy with our business overall. Uh, only had to uh, part ways with three salespeople, uh, which was unfortunate. We hate getting rid of people. It's, it's honestly a family. Like we, we really, it, it sucks. It's the worst thing to do for us, but, um, yeah, things, things are, things are good. We're, we're in a positive direction. I'm considering cotton masks as a traditional promotional product you're decorating them um that's not ppe to me that's like a fidget spinner coming out and, and, yep. and you ran mm. that for a while um so we've dedicated a ton of resources to printing and and uh, customizations and such on that that's that's obviously a big chunk of uh, uh, of our sales right now um hand sanitizers uh i'm so happy we had purchased admin six years ago uh, yeah. we're doing uh <laughs> Like the real, like I was wondering why the hell we did it for a long time, and now I know why. No, I'm just teasing. Yeah, but pa packaging uh, too. I mean, they've, they've yeah, that's gotta be huge. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I've got a couple of questions in regards to the the hand sanitizers because obviously we've we've seen a lot come out recently with uh, I think there's like 86 different brands or something like that that have been flagged for, by the FDA because of uh, methanol or something in the hand sanitizer. For, that's valid all for Mexico for the most part. All so. for Mexico. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so be careful uh, where you're sourcing your, that. <laughs> your hand sanitizers guys. No, but but Mexico is a nice option typically. Right. So we, yeah. we're sourcing some masks from Mexico. And we're, we, we source a couple of things here and there. And um, it, it's normally a good, a good deal because of the duty scenario and quick turn and such. So mm -hmm. um, cut it. He cut it. He says hi on Facebook, by the way. No. All right. Hi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, hey John. Brandon, Brandon Petrich asks uh, sports uh, with multiple excla ex exclamation points uh, and just wants to know if, uh, if you've seen any cool promos come through hit uh, for some of the sports that are coming back online. A anything we, that you've seen there yeah, that, we just, that you're willing we to share? We did math for the Miami Marlins. <laughs> 10,000 of them. We got an order on. They needed Monday. those a week or two <laughs> earlier, probably. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Order on Tuesday. That's <laughs> 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 hysterical. <laughs> yep. Fair yeah. enough. Uh, yeah, that, that, and we're a couple, uh, season ticket holder type deals where it's going you know, direct mail to them and, and whatnot. Yeah, we're seeing some of that too. Education yeah, and sports, man. I tell you those, I feel like those industries specifically took huge, huge hits. For the most part, that's a, that's a, that's a tough, tough business to be in right now. If you're, if you're heavily focused there. A lot of this industry is event based. Like we, I, I feel mm -hmm. like as an industry, if we hadn't, pivoted to PPE could really be in a, in a world of shit right now because this is an event-based industry for the most part you know and and there's no events and it doesn't look like many are going to be happening at all until 2021 if that even happens 
Did you guys see that article that came out yesterday about how CES canceled their big annual mm. trade show in Vegas? Yep, That's I actually saw Brandon posted that, and I don't know if it was Promo Corner or somewhere else, but yeah, he had, he had posted that. That's crazy. So crazy. now, like, it makes you makes you wonder, like, if CES is canceling, is PPAI going to push Expo back? You know, well, um, aren't they there the same time we usually are? So maybe it'll it's, be better. Yeah, it's usually it's a week before. Okay. Yeah. So CES, yeah, right happened. before. Mm-hmm. Well, now, CJ. In regards to the trade shows, I've actually got a question for how HIT is handling uh, with the sales reps, how you guys are handling, you know, sales and what you guys are focused on. Are you doing, is it all like Zoom stuff or are you, are you, you know, potentially willing to get back out on the road with regional shows and things like that as in the fall or what, how are you guys handling that? With, with what the, the COVID scenario in Florida, it's, it, it's pretty bad. So that being a Florida based company, we're kind of being a little bit more conservative in that regard. Um, I don't really care if, I'll use Steve, Julie Strobe wants to go have coffee with somebody or whatnot. But as far as full presentations are concerned, we're kind of erring on the side of conservation there and, and, and not doing it. Um, we've been pretty successful with, with video meetings, another buzzword zoom that I'm not going to use, um, uh, video meetings and such. And it's been pretty successful and, 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 um, yeah, and it's really cut back on our expenses and, these guys, the sales reps want to get back on the road, though, man. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're dying for it right now for, for many reasons, especially if you have younger kids, I'm sure. So, um, but no, we're, 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 we're not letting them, uh, we're not authorizing them to do that at, at this point. Fair and, enough. And, and for the foreseeable future, I mean, I don't, I don't know if, if all these events are being canceled and, and, and potentially PPAI Vegas is, 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 I think it's a 70, 30 chance, 30 chance. No, 70%. Yeah. I'm, I'm 30%. Yes. 70% now. Um, are you guys exhibiting at ASI Chicago in, in September? Uh, we do have a booth of still booked at this point. Yes. But I, what does that really mean? Yeah. Gotcha. I, yeah. So uh, that, that's more of a regional deal now. Um, obviously yeah, it true. becomes a major show when the awards dinners there and a lot of the big suppliers and distributors join. Um, and it's just kind of a fun mid-year break for everybody. And back in the day, it was a huge show for because it, it was your mid-year showcase and you're showing all these new products that you're developing. But with with the, the, the way our industry works now and you basically develop a new product every day if you want, uh, yep. that, that's out. But yeah, we're, we're still signed up. I, I, I don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure. Um, and uh, we'll see how that, that goes. But I, I, I'm, I'm doubtful that that even happens. Hey Jeff, I know um, earlier you mentioned the the methanol thing and the sanitizers, mm-hmm. and I think right before we jumped on, there was some discussion about something coming out about the cotton uh, in in China as well. And I, I think it's helpful information for distributors to be aware of too. See, CJ, can you allude to what's what you heard or what's going on? With that? Yeah, so th- there's a um, an area in China, and I'm going to butcher in Xinjiang. I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably butchering how it's pronounced, but. Um, there's a heavy, heavy Muslim uh, weeder population, and they're basically indicating that they're going through prison slash concentration camp type um, labor right now, and it's been going on for a while. And um, most companies are, are, are obviously against that. Um, and about 80 to 85 <laughs> percent, yeah, 80 to 85 percent of the uh, cotton grown uh, in China is made there and distributed amongst all the other locations in China. So this, ha- we, we got kind of got wind of it about six months ago and um, I'm sure it's, it's mainly an apparel thing right now. Um, but it's moving into the hard goods and we make bags and we make rally towels and things of that nature. And most of those were made in China, but masks, right? <laughs> masks, sure. Um, we, we, we're, we're, we've now moved most of our production to Vietnam because of not just because of that, but they had, more aggressive price, but that's neither here nor there. So it's a huge supply chain move. Um, there's the, 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 the raw materials are, are, are prevalent there and it's, it's just easier, quite frankly, to not have to move things to uh, India, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Vietnam, et cetera. Um, but, and, and it's a, it's a slower process than you like um, to get everybody up to speed, matching samples, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But that's that's a position that hits taking, and and within the next, I'd say six to nine months, you you won't see any uh, 
cotton products made in China from us. Wow. Interesting. That's so ha- go ahead, Mike. No, I, I think that's really awesome. I think us trying to find ways to, to, to do better in general, like that's just awesome. Like you don't want to support any type of company or any type of uh, action that's using concentration camps to make your, your t-shirts. It's not worth it. And, 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 and this, I'm just, you know, I'm not making, uh, you can go search this. There's articles uh, by the Wall Street Journal and, and such. And um, don't, again, don't quote me on this and, and whatnot. It's just, yeah. it's a position that we're taking because yeah. of uh, of some research that we've done and and, uh, and our customers have done. And um, so that's that. That's good, though, you're making- I, I imagine, uh, go ahead. oh, sorry, Meg. I was just to say, I imagine Prague, um, the product responsibility group with PPAI is probably going to be researching into stuff like that as well, um, just to figure out what's best for the industry as a whole. So it's probably good to stay a step ahead if you can. You know? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I would imagine so. So I'm probably going to butcher this name, but Debbie Podlegar, she, she says, Yahoo, no more China products. That's not what we said. We said no more <laughs> cotton coming out of China. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyhow, yeah, that's a question I've got for you as far as like how a, a large supplier like hit would, would sort of make that transition with your, your supply chain, you know, moving from, from one country to another, cause you obviously deal with a whole different set of problems than, uh, you know, China's got the skilled labor and the, uh, you know, the factories, the raw goods, like that's what they're, they're used to. So how do you make that transition and deal with the different issues that other, other exporting countries might have? So, so for the most part, it's been cut and sew type products that have moved out of China. Um, it's very hard to uh, make a power bank um, anywhere yeah. outside of China, realistically, unless you're bringing the parts, all the parts somewhere and assembling them. Um, textiles cut and sew, right? So uh, when the tariff situation went down, which uh, I should not be have been thrilled about, but I was that we did that. It was I, I believe it was good for our country. Um, we, we made a change a while ago. This was, uh, almost five years ago. Now, uh, we got wind of that happening and, uh, we moved a lot of our bag production to Vietnam and to India, um, our caps to Bangladesh, um, et cetera. So we were kind of already there. Um, so it wasn't a huge transition. There were some specialty caps and bags that we were making in China, um, that we can move out, but For us, it was relatively easy. We already had relationships and agents in all these locations and QC and whatnot. Um, So not too hard, but overall, if you're doing it on the fly, it's, it's a son of a gun. It's, it it is not easy to just, if you, if you carry eight colors in a product, where does the material get dyed? How does that color match? Does the PMS color match exactly to what they were doing in China? Was the dyeing process exactly the same? Um, There's so many factors that are involved that, that most, most people don't even see. And I no. don't yeah. think that you have already taken all these things in consideration and are not making those decisions on the fly, which would dramatically be affected those results if you were, because now yep. you have time to, you know, study everything. Yeah. You're yeah. right. And what happens in, in, in the shirt world, right? Or, or for us at Tote Bag, if, if uh, oh, that you have, someone gives you an order for 5,000 pieces, well, 3,000 came from China. One dye lot, yeah. came from <laughs> India, and the dye lot's a little off. Yeah. And you're moving quick and it's got to ship in one day and you don't, you know, your team's not using their head properly and, and segregating the inventory and what, and you just ship it all together. And, and uh, then the order gets rejected or whatnot. You, you were trying to do the right thing and you get burned in the end, but yeah. we have a lot of QC pl- check QA QC checks in place, but it does slip under us a lot and, and other major suppliers and many times. So it happens. Yep. Yep. So one yep. of the things that we talked about a long time ago when we first started the show was sort of uh, the supplier versus distributor and, and how a lot of things are actually put on the, on the supplier. So one of the things you just commented on there, CJ, sort of makes me, it brings me back to that conversation. So from your perspective, what's one of the things that you would like to see from distributors to make life a little bit easier on the supplier, just to understand that relationship that the suppliers and distributors have? Because obviously there's a very low barrier to entry in our industry. And so, yeah. you know, there's there's quite a, quite a bit of, I I just got one, I got one big one, make the phone call. There you go. Make make the phone call that we have a hard time uh, during this. And I'm sorry to bring the PPE thing back up, but there were some major challenges and we had issues importing out of China, exporting out of China and their regulations changed and our regulations changed. Labeling all that. Yeah. 
and air freight went from $3 a kilo to $35 a kilo. And by the time you shipped it, you had to get more, you try to get more money and, and whatnot. I had to get on, I would say 20 phone calls with end users. Um, and it just seemed like I was able to really easily communicate to them what was going on, making it real life situation. Like uh, the Procter and Gamble was one of them. I asked them, are you guys having challenges out of China? Are you for, for products that you're importing yourself? Well, yeah, of course. So what makes the promotional product industry any different? Yeah. And they kind of got that right. You said it in a very polite way. I would never embarrass my client or whatnot, but a lot of times distributors are afraid to make a phone call in fear of losing the account for telling them some bad news. That's, that's my biggest pet peeve. Um, it always has been, and I'm happy and most, uh, suppliers are happy to hop on a phone call to help explain what's going on. Another analogy I used was Amazon. Most times I can order this pen off Amazon and I get it the next day. Well, now it's taking upwards two, three, four weeks because their supply chain's not in place. Yeah. Yeah. The largest company in the world can't handle it. Why can a 20 or 30 or $500 million supplier handle it? And why is that any different? Yeah. So those are my frustrations. But overall, um, there's been a fear of distributors not paying because of this and whatnot. We've had a really good experience. And, and um, the, again, the handful of customers that we were doing uh, that PPE stuff with were rock stars. They were fantastic, supportive, understanding, et cetera. So, um, yeah, that's my biggest pet peeve. Make the phone call. Fair enough. Awesome. Do either of you guys have any, anything else to ask from, from CJ? Yeah. So a couple of things really quickly. So we didn't even talk about this, but I want to congratulate you on number six on supplier of the year through top 40 ASI. So congratulations. Very well deserved. And the reason why I even want to bring that up is because CJ, you and I have known each other for such a long time. And hearing that you came in in 2005 was I, I used to be one of CJ's customers. So was I one of your first outside sales calls um you were up there yeah yeah absolutely that was, what was that little restaurant we went to out to, right after atlantic city too that was yeah. a cool little re- reggae type yeah yeah, so yeah i used to take megan and, and gimme's to dinner yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. awesome i think the first time i met him he came, i found out like that morning that cj was coming in and i was out the night before at white trash wednesdays and i showed up and i was like <laughs> Pulled out of bed, I think, and I, was, I had to drive like 45 minutes to this meeting, and I was like, to their house, <laughs> <laughs> to Kim and Ed's house. Yeah, yeah. House, yeah. 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 And um, gosh, I mean, so and literally, I was supposed to meet him, I think, prior to that, and he offered to buy me a McDonald's Happy Meal. If I came down to Florida, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. No, we were young. We were so freaking young, and like that's just crazy. Like it feels like yesterday, but I'm still young. Yeah, um, I'm not. No, but no, but it, it that's that's been a really cool kind of dynamic change for me. Is and 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 I still feel like I'm in tune with what's going on and the sales world because I had a lot. I that's that was my job to go out and meet as many people as I possibly could and become friends with them and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's, 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 it, we had, a, we, it was a really good run and, and not that that's over, but you know, things change and you have different responsibilities and such yeah, now. Yeah. Yep. But, very yeah. Cool. I remember very well. Yeah. Go way back. Yep. <laughs> we need, we need pictures or it didn't happen. I want to see the well, old I'm baby sure Meg, sure. baby CJ pictures. Truth. <laughs> <laughs> Probably there. <laughs> Let me go back to my MySpace pictures. Let me see if I can go uh, dig up. Yeah. Some- and music will start playing when you click on it. Yeah. 2005 might have been pre MySpace. I don't know. Um, all right, Stephen, any, any closing remarks or questions for CJ? No, I think it's great advice. Uh, you know, communication is key, especially with the end users about what's going on. I think that's something we can all take to heart. And hopefully that we will continue to do that more to take some pressure off the supplier side. You know, I think it's, we're all working together here to get through and appreciate the insight. And uh, also the, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel, maybe for, for hard goods. I, I, I don't know in my head, I felt like it was a lot worse than it was. And for some, I'm sure it was, but just to know that there, there is still a hard goods market out there is, is positive. You know, I think people need to, to not get in a hole about it and just keep pushing. So. Figure out what hard goods to it's- sell. Right. Exactly, and what industries to sell to? Because not right. all not all industries have been affected negatively. Exactly, some have yep. been affected positively. So, 
uh, you know, you just got to, you know, pull your head out of the sand a little bit if, if things are down and, you know, try to figure out, you know, where, where you can get that business. I know it's difficult, uh, you know, but that's, that's where, you know, where you'll be able to make the difference is either finding the industries you can sell to or what products to sell. Um, so that being said, uh, listen, guys, just wanted to talk about Tervis one more time. Uh, Tervis added their stainless, uh, stainless to their well-established line about two years ago with the goal of being uh, better than the competition by utilizing state-of-the-art custom 360 degree UV printing. It's available in four sizes, 12 ounce, 20 ounce, 30 ounce, and a 24 ounce water bottle. They've got a five year warranty on these things. They're 18, eight copper lined, vacuum insulated, eight hours hot, 24 hours cold. Uh, you really got to check those products out at tervispromos.com. Now that being said, CJ, any closing remarks for yourself, anything else the audience needs to know about hit anything else you'd like to, to point out to us? No, um, uh, being in just, just the reality that being in Florida, COVID has, has hit, hit, uh, no pun intended. And, um, what? it's real, it's real, <laughs> it's real. And, and it's also not the person that gets, uh, infected, so to speak, it's the people around them. They become very fearful. Um, so your labor force gets detracted a little bit. Um, that's, that's been a, that's been a challenge over the past month and, um, it's real. I don't, I'm not going to materialize or, or judge or whatnot. I'll, I'll stay very agnostic with this whole scenario, but the, the, the situation is real and one person not may not react the way another person does. So we have to be very mm -hmm. cognizant of that. Um, that can impact lead times that can impact jobs that we're supposed to ship. And the guy that gets it, the person that's, let's say it's a t-shirt printing, the guy that's pulling it off the dryer might not want to go to work the next day because he heard that his buddy, was, was going to get tested. Right. So I think over the next six to nine to 12 months, there's going to be a lot more of this. And, uh, we, we just all have to be very, um, understanding of, of what's going on in this world right now and, and, and not jump to judgment. And, and, and from a supplier buying from overseas too, um, like India was shut down for four months or for four weeks. And, uh, we buy a lot, like we said, a lot of bags out of there we were being a little, our team was being a little hard on them too. They can't control what's going on and the people that are coming back and whatnot. So as just kind of a universe, I think we need to just be all be a little bit more understanding supplier, distributor, end user, vendor uh, for us, et cetera. Um, that's that. And I did have uh, Steven, what, what's, and I haven't really talked to, I mean, I talk to distributors every day, right. But what's your, what's your outlook? What have you experienced? Um, and, and, and whatnot. Just a, a quick synopsis over the past three months for you. Yeah. So <clears throat> starting, um, let's see, March, you know, we, everything kind of just halted. I think everyone was scared, you know, so um, most businesses that we worked with, we were pretty well diversified between, you know, healthcare, but we had some education and sports as well, uh, apartments and, and whatnot. Um, we saw immediate rush for PPE, hard goods dropped to like, nothing, you know, about maybe five, 10% where we were doing, you know, 70, 80%, except for projects that were still wrapping up um, as conferences were canceled. Um, it switched to about a 50, 50, um, excuse me, April, it probably went to about a 70, 30 PPE to product then to 50, 50. And now we're, we're doing more hard goods and apparel than PPE, but by, by far, I mean, we're, we're almost back our email activity across all of our sales people is back to just about normal um, and pipeline stuff looks probably within about 25%. So okay, it's pretty positive overall. I think people are just realizing like, Hey, it's not going to go anywhere. So let's adjust and just buy different stuff in different ways. And yeah. I think that's what people are doing. Pretty right. well on trend with what we see too. So yeah. awesome. All right. Well, if nothing else is uh, needed to be said, then uh, if CJ really appreciate you being on with us. Uh, appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to sit down with us three lonesome uh, <laughs> folk, but uh, Hey man, uh, really well, appreciate good. you being on. Yeah. Thanks for having me guys. And uh, good luck for the rest of the year. All right. Appreciate awesome. you as take well. Take care. Thanks. All right, take you. care guys. Bye. Oh, he's,